Hello everybody and welcome back to the new VR news. As always, I am Mateo311 and this is your one channel for everything VR related. Today, we might finally have an Oculus Quest 2 competitor. We'll go over the latest game announcements and updates and there's a few special events I want you guys to check out. If you're new to my channel, I just want to mention that I am running an Oculus Quest 2 giveaway that's sponsored by Superbright, the developers of In Death Unchained. There's a link to that down in the comments. Okay guys, let's not waste any more time and jump right into this video. So let's start things off with the bullet hell roguelite Yuki. Yuki comes from the same studio that brought us the Pixel Rip series. Yuki is coming to both the Oculus Quest and Steam on July 22nd and it will capture some of that childhood nostalgia where you held an action figure in your hand and pretended to fly around killing enemies. This appears to be a vibrant and truly unique VR experience that I can't wait to try out. Speaking of unique games, we have Rezzle Player 22. It's part sport trainer and rhythm game. You'll be heading soccer balls, improving your hand-eye coordination and overall fitness level, and just having some fun. Rezzle Player 22 is coming exclusively to the Oculus Quest later this summer. So next up, we got a surprise announcement from Sony's State of Play. We're finally getting a sequel to Moss. We currently do not have a release date to Moss Book 2, nor is there confirmation that it will be on any other platform besides the Sony PlayStation VR, but if there is some exclusivity involved, I expect it to only be a timed release. The original Moss was an absolutely amazing puzzle platformer with an undeniable amount of charm available on all major VR platforms. I'm expecting Book 2 to deliver an even better experience, and I can't wait to try this game when it's available. I waited way too long to try the original Moss, simply because I thought a puzzle platformer with a mouse protagonist would not interest me, but I was dead wrong. Speaking of being wrong, my original opinion of both Synth Riders and O-Shape was not very positive, but man have those games come a long way. There are five new songs available for both O-Shape and Synth Riders, and if you don't already own these games, you could pick up both titles for only $15 and 30 cents in a combo discount package that's currently running for the next three days. Both Synth Riders and O-Shape are an excellent alternative to Beat Saber if you're looking for a rhythm game that gets you moving around a bit more. Okay, so today's last game topic is the absolute best VR mod out there, and that's the Bioshock mod for Half-Life Alex. It was already absolutely amazing, but it's getting some new updates. In the mod's current state, it delivers an authentic Bioshock Rapture experience using assets from the original game, but it's still very much Half-Life Alex at its core. The enemies still include the Combine, Head Crabs, and your standard Half-Life Alex zombies. It also has the same resin system and weapons from Half-Life Alex but not for much longer. The updates will have enemies from the original game, including Splicers, Big Daddies, and Little Sisters. There's also new weapons and a new weapon upgrade system. The Bioshock mod already feels like its own AAA title game with amazing level design and excellent voice acting, and these new updates are just gonna push it over the top. If you haven't tried the mod yet, I highly recommend it in its current state, but maybe you wanna wait a little bit longer for these new updates. Okay, before we move on to the main topic of today's video, there's three special events I wanna mention. The first is my buddy Eric for President's live stream. I recently made an appearance on his show, and there's a possibility possibility we might make that a common occurrence. Eric has amazing guests from all over the industry, and he also does a segment where anyone can join in, ask some questions, or pitch anything VR related. Eric has been a powerhouse in the VR community for quite some time, but he's trying to be much more progressive with his content, and I really think you should check it out. There's links down in the description if you guys need them. Next on the list is the weekly VR newsletter Immersive Wire. They recently did a quick little write-up on yours truly, and they have some truly interesting takes on what's going on in the VR industry. There's a link down in the description to both my Q&A and also the subscription page for Immersive Wire. Okay, our final special event is Season 3 for Dash League. Dash League is a competitive Hyper Dash organization. Their current Season 3 prize pool is $5,000 and growing. There's 35 teams and over 300 players, and they have training for people who are just getting into the game. So if you think you have what it takes to play Hyper Dash at a competitive level, or you just want to learn to get better, go check out the Dash League. There are links in the description, and signups are open from now until August 29th. Okay, so let's move on to some hardware news and talk about the Lynx XR2. Now, this is the only other standalone headset besides the Oculus Quest that is targeting the consumer level. It's also a hybrid AR and VR headset. Previously, this headset was going to cost $1,500 and would be targeted at enterprise alone. 
The company has now shifted gear and is looking to bring the price down to only a few hundred dollars. They were able to significantly lower their price by modifying the existing lens and removing the need for eye tracking. From a spec standpoint, the headset is comparable to both the Oculus Quest 2 and the HTC Vive Focus 3. It features the same XR2 chipset. The LCD screens are 1600 by 1600 resolution, placing them right between the Oculus Quest 2 and Oculus Quest 1. And it also has AR features that no other headsets have. Now, even if the Lynx XR2 includes features that no other headset has, has comparable hardware, and is able to bring the price down as low as the Oculus Quest 2, they still have some other major hurdles. For starters, the headset will not include controllers. It will be capable of hand tracking and will will support the upcoming Finch Shift controllers, but they cost $250 and do not have a standard VR controller layout. AR applications are currently unproven, so we don't know how much of a benefit this will be, and they don't have an established ecosystem for games like Facebook. So it's great that someone wants to go up against Facebook in the standalone market, but can they actually compete? I'm really hoping for some surprise partnership with a software company that helps them get these VR games out. I know Valve doesn't do mobile games, but this is somewhere I'd love to see them jump in, and then we would finally have some real competition. If you're interested in this headset, they have a Kickstarter coming in September, and the headset is scheduled to release sometime next year. Obviously, I'll try and cover this headset when available. I'm trying to keep some high hopes here, stay as optimistic as possible. Who knows, maybe the stars will align, they have that ecosystem partnership, they deliver some killer AR applications, and games end up running just as well on this headset as they do on the Oculus Quest. If that ends up being the case, we'll finally have some competition to Facebook. But let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Okay, everybody, that was today's new VR news. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. If you're new here, please consider subscribing. And as always, I'll see you guys on next time.